uh, it's 10 o'clock and uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. I just want to welcome you to our webinar this morning, News Bank, America's Newspapers. We're going to be switching the screen over to the main presentation. So you'll see your screen change up here. And my name is Debbie Hibbard. I'm a reference librarian in the Archives Research Room here at KDLA. And I'm joined this morning by Valerie Edgeworth. She's in our Continuing Education Department. And she is um, going to be chatting with you this morning. So if you have any kind of technical or sound issues or even any questions um, as we go through the webinar, just please chat those into Valerie. And um, we'll try to figure out what's going on or with questions. Um, if we don't know the answer, we'll get back to you. Okay. Um, also, uh, just a few other housekeeping um, PDF of the at the end of the webinar. So, if you want the slides, those will be available. Also, um, we will have a short survey that I hope you'll take at the end. Um, just uh, five questions, very short, uh, just to get your feedback. Okay. So again, today we're talking about the Research Database News Bank. And let me just go over a little bit what we're going to be covering today. Um, we're going to first talk about content or what is available in NewsBank. Um, then we're going to look at how it formats and displays um, articles and the results. Um, we'll also be going over how to access it and we're going to spend some time on search techniques. And then we'll finish up by looking at how to set up your own personal account, which they call My Collection. So let's talk a little about NewsBank before we get started. What is it? Um, it's a web-based electronic database, free for you to use because you're a state employee. And you can use it anywhere you have an internet connection. You can use it with any device. Um, you can use it with a smartphone. You can use it with a laptop computer, iPad, tablet, any kind of tablet that you have. Um, so you don't have to just use it for work. You can also use it just for your own personal um, interest. Um, so all here for you because you are a state employee. Um, also, uh, your ID is your state library account number, and you'll set up a password, and that's something we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, also like to mention that we do pay for this particular database. Some of our databases we get through Kentucky Virtual Library, which is a separate agency. Um, they provide um, databases to libraries across the state. Um, this one, though, KDLA pays for. And we hope that you'll use it because um, budgets being what they are these days, um, if we don't get use from it, then we may end up having to cut it or lose it. So definitely. Um, Use it as much as you can. Hopefully you'll find it useful in your work as well as um, for any <clears throat> personal interest or um, research that you're going to be doing for yourself. Okay, NewsBank contains um, full text newspaper articles and it's updated daily. Um, the time span for the papers varies from paper to paper and some of the newspapers are available all the way back to the 1980s. Um, a lot of them, though, are available from the early 2000s forward, so about the time that material started to be published online. Okay, and NewsBank allows you to do a lot of flexible searching, and we're going to be talking about the, that later in uh, search techniques. Um, the handling of results from your searches is also very convenient. You have the option to print, save, you can email it, um, you can share it with others, and we'll talk a little more about that when we look at setting up your personal account. Um, NewsBank is a fairly large database. It has over 8,000 um, U.S. and international news sources in it. And it includes newspapers from all 50 states and has some international newspapers as well. We call it America's Newspapers because that's the bulk of its collection. But there are some international newspapers in there. 
Um, about 6,000 of the 8,000 new sources are from the states. And you have major metro publications, such as the Chicago Sun-Times, um, some national titles like USA Today. Um, there's also some news wires in there, so you'll see some things from the Associated Press and um, United uh, Press International. And it also contains some local news feeds. The great thing for us here in Kentucky, though, is that it has over 70 news sources from Kentucky, so it contains many of Kentucky's newspapers. Um, so of those uh, 70 news sources, 50 of them are newspapers. Some of them are news feeds from local television stations. You have a smattering of magazines and blogs in there as well. But material from Kentucky. Okay, and... Um, just to give you an idea what's available from Kentucky, here's a sampling of those 50 plus newspapers that are available. Um, of course, the first one is a biggie, that's the Lexington Herald Leader. Um, this one goes all the way back to the mid 80s. And as you can see from the list, it has papers that cover many different areas of Kentucky. You've got Harlan, you've got Winchester, um, Bardstown, Elizabethtown, um, just all different areas, Bowling Green, um, all different areas of the state. Okay, and let's just look at the format um, for a moment and then we'll go on into how you access it. Um, so when we say full text, what we mean is that the article has just the words. So it's not going to look, if it's HTML full text, it's not going to look like it does um, in the actual newspaper. Um, so here's what the article looks like. You can see this is a 2008 article from the Middles World Daily News, and this is basically what you're going to get with the reformatted text. Um, with any photos, um, those are omitted. Those uh, You might see the caption at the bottom of the article, so I'll show you what that looks like. You see the caption here. That indicates that there was a picture with that article, um, and it does have the caption there. So if you wanted to get this article and you actually needed, you wanted the full article with the photos and everything that accompanied it, um, you would need to request that through Interlibrary Loan. Um, we can either, uh, if it's the Herald Leader, the State Journal, or um, the Louisville Courier Journal, we can just go to our microfilm and get that for you. But for other newspapers around the state, we would need to um, get that through another library that has access to that. And so we would contact them, and if you could just give us the citation information here at the top of the article, um, we'll send out a call to libraries across the state, and they will send us the photo from either if they get the paper newspaper, uh, some libraries still do keep paper newspapers uh, back a certain period of time. Also, um, if they have microfilm of it, we can get it from the microfilm. And that will include the photos. So, interlibrary loan. Always happy to do that for a state employee. Okay. Something else that's not included in NewsBank, um, they don't have advertisements, they don't include the classifieds. Um, those sales circulars and coupons that are so prevalent in the Sunday paper, especially in the Herald Leader, <laughs> they don't have any of that. Um, stocks, the TV and news li movie listings, and the funny papers are not included. So, primarily just the articles. Okay, now let's take a uh, talk a little bit about how the results display, and we'll look at how you can change that. So you get your standard page option. It's got your headline, your publication title. So you see that right here. Um, it tells you that it's from the Messenger from Madisonville, the date that it was published, how many words it is. They even have the Lexall reading level. Um, and then you get a little blurb about kind of the first paragraph. It's, it's uh, actually the first paragraph of the article to give you an idea of what the article is about. This is the default display. So um, when you first 
start looking for articles in Newsbank, this is how they're going to show up when you get your search results. Now, if you want to change that, come over here to Page Options, and you can select Minimal, and that will change the display. So you see it looks like this. You just get the title, you get the um, paper that it's from, and the date that it was published, but you don't get any information that first paragraph. That gives you more uh, search results on one page, so you see more of your search results, but um, you don't get that first paragraph again to kind of give you an indication of what the article is about. Okay. And then another thing that um, I'd like to show you is how the results um, sort. So a lot of people may not be aware that um, in a database like this, um, typically when it sorts, um, it puts them in order. And in Newsbank, it puts them in order based on the most recent matches first. Um, so it's chronologically, it's the latest thing that has gone into the database in chronological order. So that makes sense for a newspaper because you get the very latest news at the top of your search results. Um, but sometimes you may want articles that are more relevant to your search. So you see here, when you search WikiLeaks, this is the default, and it says um, your most recent matches first. So you've got March the 8th, 2017 is the first article that comes up because that was the very last article that went into the database that has that particular keyword in it. Then you've got March the 5th, then you've got February. But you can request that it sort by best matches first, so that would be the rele relevant searches. Um, so based on whatever keywords you've put up there in your search, and again we have WikiLeaks, um, you're getting articles from way back in 2012, 2011, um, and these you know, have WikiLeaks in the title, um, they are a stronger match based on the database's parameters for your keyword. Okay, are there any questions about that? Just how it formats and how it displays and how you can change the sort? Okay, all right, so let's move on into um, getting into the database itself. So you're going to go to our homepage first, that's kdla.ky.gov, and go to that drop-down uh, state employees menu, that's kind of our go-to, it has everything, all the services, um, all the information you need um, for using services here at KDLA, if you're a state employee. You're going to click on research databases, which is that third option down, and that's going to bring you to this page, where you'll click on that very first icon, News Bank. And it's going to ask you to sign in. So that you, you put your library account number in and your password. If you are new to KDLA and you have not set up a password, um, that little set reset password link at the bottom is what you'll need to do first. Um, so you'll click on that. It's going to send you an email with instructions on setting your password. And um, then you can get into the databases. Okay, so once you've entered that information, it's going to drop you into Newsbank's homepage. Okay, so they have some nice shortcuts on their homepage, and let me show you a few of those. Um, here's the shortcut to USA Newspapers, and it brings up all 6,000 news sources. So from this search box, you could search using all 5,000 plus news sources for the United States. And you've got that handy little map there. It also shows you how many sources there are for each state, or how many newspapers or um, publications they have for each state. And there's your search box up at the top. Okay, another useful shortcut is um, the one for Kentucky newspapers. So again, you've got your search box, 
And if you don't make any changes, you can search here in all 75 publications. And whatever page you are on, it will always tell you exactly where you are searching. So here you can see that we are looking only at Kentucky publications. And you can see the list of Kentucky publications that are available in NewsBank. And the list also shows the dates that we have things for. So this is how you check to see if they have something that may be older or more current. As you can see, oops, the new Owensboro Messenger goes all the way back to the 80s, while other publications only have things available from the 2000s. So here we have um, the Elizabethtown News Enterprise and it goes from 2008 to current. And the Richmond Register, 2008 to current. So, and then down here it looks like the Winchester Sun goes back a little bit further, 2006. Okay, and as you can see there are a lot of different ways you can browse in NewsBank. Um, I'd like to quickly go over a few others that I found interesting. Um, so another shortcut they have available is search by era. And once you click on era, it will provide a list of different eras that you can search through. So let's look at end of the Cold War. Okay, so we've put in ARPANET. ARPANET is the original internet. And um, we're sorting by best matches first. We're limiting our results to USA, end of the Cold War. You can also search by um, the presidential area, era. So you just click on that link, presidential era. And that provides a list of presidential eras to search from. So we've got Franklin D. Roosevelt. We've got uh, William J. Clinton. Barack Obama, and so on. So George H. W. Bush. So if we put in Americans with Disabilities Act, we're searching um, that was signed by George H. W. Bush. Another thing I wanted to point out before we move on to searching is the special topics. I'm just going to read what NewsBank has on their website about their special reports. Um, I think they sum it up quite nicely. NewsBank's special reports focus on topics of interest. They include content from sources throughout the world to provide a global perspective, current and background information, statistics, maps, images, websites, and suggested search terms. New information is added daily to featured and current reports. So let's take a look at world conflict and terrorism. And here you can see the different things that you can find in the special reports, images, maps, websites, and so on. So NewsBank really has a lot of interesting stuff to offer um, and lots of different ways to search and look for information. And on that special report, we've got several different areas there. You've got your articles, you can look at background data, and so on. Anybody have any questions before we move on to searching? Okay, that's uh, one where I'd have to go back actually and look. Um, if uh, I don't know specifically, I believe the Paducah Sun is included. Um, I mean, we could we could look at that right now and go into the. Uh, um, if you're following along in the research database, um, we can we can take a look at that. We will get back to you before the end of the webinar on that one. Unfortunately, it is only available for active state employees. Um, again, because of budget issues, once you retire, your account converts to a Kentucky resident, so you're no, you no longer have the state employee designation. 
um, unfortunately. We get that question a lot because a lot of people do use our databases when, as state employees and they want to continue doing so um, after they are retired. Um, you may be able to contact your public library and see if they offer News Bank. Um, a lot of public libraries throughout the state do. Okay. So now we're going to talk about searching. Um, I'm going to show you how to search by state, and we will be searching in a single newspaper. Um, for an example, there's a specific article in the newspaper that you're looking for, and we're going to go over how to find a specific article. I'm also going to go over some basic search techniques, as well as some advanced search techniques, and I'll give you some search tips. Okay. So let's talk about searching places and titles. Um, when you're in Kentucky, you can search all 75 sources at one time once you bring Kentucky up. And if you want any 74 or less, you'd have to go and select the publications that you want to search. Okay, so I decided that I did not want to search all 75. Um, I'm going to go here to where it says select multiple publications, and then I would check the publications I'd like to search. Okay, so in this case, I'm selecting the Advocate Messenger, the Anderson News, the Carrollton News, and the Casey County News. And you see that right there. You just make the check mark in the box next to the publications you want to search. Yes, it can. And we'll look at that here in a little bit. Um, once you have selected the publications you want, um, click on the box, and that's going to set up your search to include all those papers. So you see the little include or exclude down there at the bottom. And it shows you on the side there these four publications are selected. And this will set up your search to include all those papers. Okay, I'm going to do a quick search of the Bluegrass State Games. And you see I've got things from Anderson News, the Advocate Messenger. I did get some results from Carrollton and Casey, but they were older articles that didn't show up on the first results page. So you see here the results that we got from Bluegrass State Games, searching those four publications. Okay, and if you want to search another state, you can choose it from the map or list. I've got that handy little map there. Just say you want to look at Iowa publications, just click on the state, and that brings up all the publications that they have for Iowa. Okay, if you want to search two or more states, it's similar to what we've done um, with the other searches. You can click on Select Multiple State and Territories or Check States from National List and click Include, as we did with the uh, Kentucky publications. So go back to your map, select Multiple States and Territories, and then it brings up the list that you can choose from. Okay, I'm going to select Arkansas, Georgia, and Iowa, and I click Include. And you see that the search has been filtered to these states. Okay, and if we search the term Medicaid fraud, we see these different publications from those states. We've got Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and Atlanta Journal, Constitution from Georgia, and so on. Okay, if you want to search for a single title, the best way to do this is to browse by publication. Basically, what you do is if you want to come over to the left of the page, you'll find a link for publication, and when you click on that, you'll get a new search interface. And basically, it's a listing of the 6,195 um, items that they have for um, these states.
and it's in alphabetical order. So it starts with numbers, anything that's got numbers, and then it goes on to the alphabetical titles. So um, go to the search box and put in the title that you're interested in. And um, I entered Philadelphia Inquirer, which will then take you to this page. So from here, if you use the search box, you'll be searching in just the Philadelphia Inquirer, as it shows right here. And this page gives you a lot of information and allows you a lot of options to search. The calendar shows that it has issues all the way back to 1981. With its most recent issue, um, December the 2nd, um, actually this is a little bit older, um, so it would have the most recent um, one here. When this was done, this was the actual date um, back in 2016 um, when the person was working on the slide. Okay, so um, particularly for some of the larger newspapers, they do go back a little bit further. And you can actually search a particular year, day, and also most recent issues. Okay, so let's talk about some of the different search techniques. Um, I'll go through these and hopefully they'll help you get better results from your searching. And um, we're going to do some basic searching and some advanced searching. And someone mentioned Boolean operators earlier, and they do use Boolean operators. You can also search by phrase. Um, and then in the advanced searching, you can use fields, dates, and the truncation or log cards. Okay, so for a basic search, I'd use either a single keyword or a combination of words. And on this search, I'm just going to do a search on pension. So we put that keyword in. It's going to look for it in the entire text of the article, either the title or um, all the paragraphs to follow. Okay, so you see that we got 15,797 results. Also, you'll notice, just point this out here, we were searching all the Kentucky papers. Okay. And another thing you can do during a basic search is add a word to your search. To do this, um, you use the Boolean operator. So you can either um, use AND to include a term with your first term. You can use OR to indicate that you want it to search the first term or the second term. And then NOT is an exclusion term, so you want the first term but not the second term. Okay. So let's look at this in NewsBank. Okay, so you see, <clears throat> if you want to add another word to your search, you're going to have to change the field here. So I'm going to use AND. And you see that right here. And then we're going to change that field. And you have several choices there. Um, you've got all text, um, first paragraph, headline, author, and so on. So I've added all text, and <clears throat> that's the, what they use in NewsBank for, basically that's the keyword, and it's going to search the entire text. Um, but it, that would be different than doing, say, an author search, right? So, um, and, so we're looking at pension and the phrase state government. And you notice I put quotation marks around state government. That means it's going to search it as a phrase. So it's instead of it looking through the article and seeing state in one sentence and government in another sentence, it's going to search just that particular term. The state and government have to come next to one another uh, when you put quotation marks in order to show up in your results.
And the more terms you add, the more narrow your search is going to be. So if you really want to hone in on a particular concept or idea, the more terms you use, the better. Okay, now let's broaden our search. Um, I'm going to use or. And let's use the uh, phrase state worker, which is um, saying now that I want articles that have pension and state government in them and articles that have pension and state worker in them. Or. So here we have pension, which is the first thing the database is going to look for in all the text. And we're looking at the phrase state government in quotation marks. Or state worker. And you see that that brings the results to 3054. So that's broadened our search a little bit. Okay, now when you're searching for phrases, particularly in Newsbank, you're going to want to use quotation marks. Again, the quotation marks are very, very handy. I use those in a you can use that in Google as well, by the way. Um, so whenever the database is searching the terms, those two terms will have to come together um, when you include the quotation marks. So let's look at a quick example uh, with what I'm talking about again. Um, let's put the phrase ACT score in quotations in the search box. And this is an example of one of the articles um, that was received. And you can see that the words ACT score appear together in the full text of the article in the same order um, that you put in, indicated in the search box with the quotation marks. Okay, if you don't put quotation marks around it, then you're telling the database to search for those two words, but they don't have to come together. So you see here, you've got score, and then it reads ACT as ACT. <laughs> so that can really make your search, um, you know, more specific when you use quotation marks. You'll be getting exactly what you want in, in, if you're using a particular phrase or term. Okay, and now for the advanced searching. Um, basically, you don't want it to search all the text, um, which is what the default is. So keyword is the default. Um, you only want it to search some part of the article or paper. Um, so you just want to search for the author, or you just want to search the headline. And that can give you more relevant articles. Okay, so I'm going to do a search here, and you can see the default is all text. If I drop down that menu, then I'm going to get my other options, and you can see here there are many. So I'm going to do a search first in all text for Obamacare, and you see here I've got 7,000 results. Of these 7,000, I know that not all of them are really relevant articles on Obamacare necessarily. Okay, and one thing you can do to make them more relevant is to just search by the headline. So when you do that, you end up with a much more focused 783 results. And you can see the word Obamacare shows up in the headlines in all of these results. And you could also do a first paragraph search on Obamacare, which would give you more relevant information. Okay, you can also limit by date. And there is a date field, and you can search for a single day, a range of days, or you can do a before or after. So here's the second box. The default is date. And if you drop down the box, you can see the different date selection options you have to search by. So say I wanted to do a search about the fires in Gatlinburg that uh, they had a while back. Um, I wanted to see what the papers have covered within the last 30 days on that topic, so I put in my search terms and the date. 
And you can see I have results from different papers within the last 30 days. Okay, so let's talk about truncation of wildcards. Um, truncation is a way to search for words that have a common root so that you don't have to put all the variations of words you want included in the search boxes. For example, um, say you want to search for something like management or manager or managerial and you don't want to put all those words in there. Um, you can truncate it by using the asterisk and it will include the different variations of a word in your search. And there's also something called wildcards, which um, use a question mark within a word that you are searching that bring up the different variations of the word by finding the different variations of the word that go in place of the question mark. So let's get some examples of what that looks like. I'm going to do a headline search and use educate. So what I'm looking for is any headline that has educate, educational, education, and so on. And you see when I do this search, I did indeed find several variations of the word. Um, so that is a way to use truncation with these kinds of words. So here's our wildcard search, and I'm going to use a pretty typical wildcard word, which is women or woman. And you can see in my search results that I get both words, women or woman. Okay, and I want to finish our section on search by recommending that you use the help screen if you are having some trouble or have a question while you search. Um, so if you go up here to the top and select help, it'll take you to this screen. And as you can see here, there's several different things that you can select. If you need some searching suggestions or help, select the searching link and it'll take you to this page, which has the same topics that we just discussed today using wildcards, Boolean operators, um, and so on. Okay, and I'd also like to leave you with a few search tips. Um, the first one is simple. Start your search with maybe one or two words and see what kind of results you get and then start to dig a little deeper. Next, look for strange words. Um, you don't want to use common words in your search. Common words are likely to get you lots of extra hits that aren't very relevant. So if you can use an uncommon word um, you can include in your search, um, that's going to give you more relevant results. Also, what's another word for it? Um, you'll need to use synonyms sometimes when searching. For an example, you may be searching for something about Kentucky roads, but you may need to substitute roads for highways um, or just find out what are all the other types of words um, that are similar. Roads, highways, lanes, <laughs> streets. You know, there's so many different words that you can use. Unfortunately, spelling doesn't matter when using news banks. So if you search for something that is hard to spell and you get no results, you may want to double check your spelling. Um, because NewsBank does not um, check spelling like Google does. You know when you misspell something and you're searching in Google, it'll say, did you mean this? <laughs> so um, unfortunately, <clears throat> in these databases, generally speaking, in, in all the databases, um, they do not give you, look at variations on the spelling. Um, they're just not set up that way. So it's very, very specific. You have to make sure your spelling is correct. Capitalization does not matter in the news bank, so don't worry about that. Singular and plural. Um, news bank has a way of recognizing singular and searching for the plural as well. Um, so you, it, it kind of automatically truncates. Um, when If you're just looking for, say, dog or dogs, um, you don't necessarily have to put um, the asterisk on that because it is going to look for the plural. And if you get many hits, um, you can narrow it down by adding more terms with an and in front of them. Or you can narrow by dates. And if you don't get enough hits, you can always broaden your search by using or and using synonyms. And of course, do not forget about the help screen. That's always very important, particularly with databases, because some databases are, you know, they have different um, 
they use different, sometimes they use different, um, instead of an asterisk, it might use a different type of symbol. So you definitely want to go in and look at the help um, if you're uncertain. Okay, does anybody have any questions about searching? Yes, you can use a personal laptop to access NewsBank. Yeah, as long as you have your library account number and your password, um, you can log into NewsBank from anywhere. Okay, and also, um, if you have any problems with NewsBank or any of our databases, you can always contact us here at KDLA. Um, it's the 502-564-8306 number in the 502 area code. If you're outside our 502 area code, there is a toll-free number. And then we've got the um, Ask a Librarian. So you can contact the um, KDLA Reference Desk. <clears throat> there it's KDLA Reference Desk at ky.gov. And we are always happy to help. We can either do literature searches for you or um, we can walk you through it. Um, or help with any kind of technical problems you might be having, um, hopefully, with your database. <laughs> so um, sometimes just trying to get into the database can be um, difficult uh, if you're having trouble getting authentication. Sometimes that's the thing that I think that happens the most. Um, people will call and they're having trouble getting into the database because it's not authenticating their account. We will do tr some troubleshooting for you. Um, so if you have any problems, just give us a call. Okay. Are there any other questions? Any other questions? Okay. Um, Moving on now to the very last part of our webinar, we're going to look at the My Collection. And um, this is an account that you set up within NewsBank. And it is separate from your state library account. Um, you, you sign in with your state library account number to get into NewsBank. Um, and then once you're in NewsBank, you can get into a, an account that you set up in NewsBank that saves your articles. You can also save searches so that you can execute them at any time. And you can set up email alerts. If there's a particular topic that you're researching that you want to keep track of, um, you can set up an email alert. And any time a new article is added to the database um, on that topic, then it will uh, send you an email and let you know that there's a new article on the topic. And you only have to register one time, um, but you do have to log in each session after you've registered. Okay, so you can go here, and this is where um, you go to register, where it says Personal Accounts. And you can also log in here at the top of any page that you are on in NewsBank. So when you have your My Collection account, just click, click Log In. On the registration page, um, when you register for an account, you just fill out your information. And if you want to use email alerts, make sure you have an email address that you can check back often. Okay. So once you're registered with a My Collection account, you log in. And we're going to talk first about saving and um, filing things away. Um, you save them within the session that you're in, but you can file them for future access. So say you're working on a project and you're searching through NewsBank multiple times. So I've done this search and I'm interested in these first four articles. So when they come up, I click on Add to my collection. And when I do that, I can then choose the four articles that I'm interested in and I'm going to choose Add to Folder. So you click the Check the uh, box next to the article, and then add to folder in that menu at the top. 
So these articles are about KDLA, so I'd file them in the KDLA folder. So now when I come back to NewsBank um, at a later time, these articles are still available to me in my KDLA folder. So once you're logged in, you can go here to my collection and look at any article that you've saved. You can also save searches. Um, you may be wondering why you'd want to save a search. Um, this can be useful if you have a complex search that you want to run periodically. So you can save a search that you want to run at future times. So here's my search for KDLA. These are all the different ways KDLA might be expressed in a newspaper. So this is a pretty extensive search, and I wouldn't want to have to enter it every time I do this search. So it's got Kentucky Department for Libraries and Archives, KDLA, State Library, State Archives, all those different ways of referring to us. So once I've completed it, I'm going to come down here to where it says Save Search. And the next time I log in a news bank, I have the search saved. So the next time I want to execute that search, I'll be able to come in and do it. Just run it again. No, I believe it only allows you to set up one account, unfortunately, um, because that account is attached to your library account number. So. Now you could sign in with a separate if you have if your boss had a KDLA account number as well. You know you could sign in with their KDLA account number and password if they'll give that to you, and keep it under um, set up a my collection account through their library account number. Okay, and another thing you can do in my collection is set up email alerts. Um, an email alert is an email that you receive from NewsBank anytime searching um, something new comes into the database that matches a search that you've set up as an alert. So, like I said, you know, uh, basically when you've done a search and created the search, um, now you have it set up in NewsBank so that it'll run the search for you. And another nice thing about that email that alerts you to topics that you are um, keeping track of, it will include links to the articles. So you can just go straight to the article. Okay, so you'll, you'll have to create a search before you can set up an email alert. So um, you do a search like I've done here, and once the search results come up, simply click on Create Email Alert. And this is what will come up. Um, this will be your subject line. And when you get your email alerts, um, you can choose how often you want the alert sent to you. And you can select what email addresses you want to send the alerts to. And you can have it sent to multiple emails if you want. So that could be another way. If you're doing research for a supervisor, um, you can set them up in the email alerts. So they'll also get an alert to those articles. And then they should have access to the article. And this one is four times a day. <laughs> we may not want to be alerted four times a day. but And that's where you enter the email addresses. So here's an example of an article that I received from an email alert. And you can see here at the top, you have the option to add the articles to your collection. <clears throat> you can print them, save them as a PDF. You can email them to others. You can export them. And you can cite them. So you have lots of different options there. And of course, if you're using this for research purposes, um, the citing is nice because it just goes ahead and creates the citation for you. And you could copy and paste it. Okay, so again with my collection, you can save and file articles, save searches that you can execute anytime you want, and set up email alerts. Okay, and one last thing, and we mentioned this earlier about interlibrary loan. So if there's an article that you're interested in and you can't find it <clears throat> in NewsBank, um, and I have had people contact me before, and they've seen something, they've Googled it, and, you know, it'll come up, and it'll give you the teaser 
of the article, but then when you, when you try to get into it, you don't have a subscription to the newspaper, so it's like, oh no, I can't get that article. And if it's not in Newsbank, um, we can always get that for you through Interlibrary Loan. So just send us a request for the article, and um, you can request that article. I would recommend requesting it through um, Ask a, a Librarian. And we'll send your request um, to our interlibrary loan specialist, and that person will find the article at another library and email it to you as a PDF. And sometimes we can get those within the same day that you're requesting. Um, it just depends. Um, usually <clears throat> we'll get them within, uh, I think the latest has been maybe three to four days out from your request. Okay, um, yeah, this will be archived. Um, we are recording this session. Your names will be um, blotted out so that um, you don't have to worry about uh, your name appearing in the recording. Um, but this is where you would go if you want to come back to this at a later date. Um, and just click on Archive Training Sessions and under State Employees, and you will look under um, Employee Resources and then the webinar will be there for you to listen to at your leisure. Okay, any last questions? Newsbank is a really nice database. I mean, the main reason we get it is because it does have access to so many Kentucky newspapers. Um, Going to wrap up here then. So I do need to uh, let you know that this webinar was made possible in part by the Institute of Museum and Library Services. They provide grants and money to us um, that help us to um, tra you do trainings and webinars for you. Um, if you are interested in downloading a PDF of the slides, You'll see the download box there in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. Just click on Newsbank PDF, and that's going to light up that download file, and you can download it to your computer. Um, also, I encourage you to do the survey. Um, so you'll see there in the middle at the bottom, Survey, Newsbank. Um, if you click on that, then it'll light up the Browse to, and it'll bring up that URL and you can just click on Browse to, and it's going to bring up the survey. It's just five short questions, and we really do appreciate and value your feedback. So um, if you can complete that survey, take a moment uh, here at the end to do that. We'd really appreciate it. Um, also, um, we will be hanging around for a few more minutes. So if you're ready to uh, end the session, you can click on the X in the top right hand corner of your screen. Um, also, you will be getting a certificate for this training. Uh, that should come by the end of the week. Um, and uh, that will be, there will also be a link to the survey at that time if you're interested in taking it later. Um, I really appreciate your spending time with us this morning and uh, hope that you'll find Newsbank to be a helpful. Um, database and that you'll get some good use out of it either for work or for your own just personal interest. Um, whatever your research needs are, it's a great database. Um, so I hope you all have a wonderful um, rest of the Tuesday and I'm going to go ahead and uh, mute the mic and um, thanks again for attending. <laughs>